welcome to CDH Sunflower Sunday 2022. Thank you for joining us to raise awareness of congenital diaphragmatic hernia and for coming together as a community. My name's Courtney and I'm the mum of Matilda, Thomas and our CDHer Lucy. It's my pleasure to introduce today's virtual event video where you're going to hear from families in the CDH community and you're going to learn about the exciting new research study that our team have been developing with the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Make sure that you stay on until the end of the video as well for our traditional bubble blowing ceremony. I've been honoured to be the president of CDH Australia's board for the past few years. I'm incredibly proud of our dedicated team who've adapted to the many challenges and complications because of COVID during that time. I'm now stepping back from my role as president, but I will continue to be part of our board and provide my full support to our wonderful new president. It's now my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the new CDH Australia president, Honor. My name is Honor and my daughter Audrey was born with CDH in 2021. I recently joined the CDH Australia Board as President and I'm delighted to welcome you all to Sunflower Sunday. Our CDH journey started at 12 weeks. We walked into our nuchal scan and decided to see our baby bouncing around. The thought of something possibly being wrong hadn't crossed our minds. The sonographer kept going back to her heart, measuring and remeasuring, and finally announced that her heart was on a strange axis, that it was probably a variant of normal and likely to be nothing, but to have another scan in three weeks just to make sure the next scan came and went and still no definitive answers, but by 18 weeks, Audrey's stomach was very clearly next to her heart and the diagnosis was made. Unlike many CDH families, we were familiar with the term and we left that appointment completely devastated. The ensuing weeks were different specialists weighing in on survival, prognosis, morbidity, mortality. With every scan, it felt the chance of survival was getting slimmer and slimmer. We were reminded every fortnight that we didn't have to continue with the pregnancy and that we had options. We consumed so much information about CDH and tried to piece together a picture of what life after birth was likely to look like. But our amazing team at MFM at Marta Mothers in Brisbane reminded us that numbers are just that, and each of these babies will take their own path once they arrive. After an incredibly stressful pregnancy, our baby girl was born. She was placed on my chest for a quick cuddle before the neonatology team took her away for stabilisation. Within an hour, Audrey started to deteriorate and we were told to prepare to say goodbye and to make as many memories as we could. By four hours old, Audrey was on ECMO, and at less than 24 hours old, she was having her hernia repair surgery. Eventually, Audrey came off ECMO, and all the lines and tubes were removed one by one. The PICU team helped us celebrate each and every win, and would hold us through every sidestep. We left the hospital for the first time as a family after three months. Audrey still had an NG tube that was oxygen dependent. At seven months old, she was feeding orally, and by eight months old, she no longer needed the oxygen. One by one, all of her allied health supports dropped off, and now appointments are few and far between. She has always been such a happy and joyful little person, and we are so proud of everything she has overcome. We owe everything to our amazing team at Marta Mothers and Queensland Children's Hospital, and are particularly grateful to CDH Australia and the amazing families who came before us, who shared their stories and hoped for our little girl. I stumbled across the CDH Australia Facebook group one afternoon shortly after Audrey was diagnosed. What I didn't know at the time was how pivotal this group would be, an entire community of people who understand the fear and the uncertainty. While each CDH experience is unique, one commonality is that there are so many unknowns, so many questions left unanswered. I'm pleased to announce that CDH Australia have funded a new research study to help identify and prioritise those unanswered questions. This project is a collaboration with the Murdoch Children's Research Institute and will be a chance for CDH families to have their say. Healthcare providers who are involved in the care of those affected by CDH diagnosis will also be encouraged to participate. This will be your chance to have your say and be directly involved in shaping the future for families in the CDH community. Hello CDH community. It is my great pleasure to join with you for CDH Sunflower Sunday this year. My name is Dr. Trisha Prentice. 
I'm a neonatologist and a clinician scientist researcher at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute in Melbourne. MCR is the largest child health research institute in Australia, and we're delighted to collaborate with CDH Australia on a new consumer engagement project called Gaps in the CDH Journey. Our vision for the project is to understand the healthcare and research priorities of people with a lived experience of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. At the end of the project, we'll identify and publish the top 10 research priorities for CDH in Australia. We will share this with research funders, healthcare providers and research institutes. Our goal is to inspire further research and influence future care to improve the outcomes for babies diagnosed with CDH. The first stage of the project is an online survey where you will be invited to submit CDH related questions that you would like future research to answer. Please draw upon your own experience and consider what's important to you. It's up to you what questions you submit and we've intentionally designed the survey to be open-ended so that we can capture everyone's experiences and ideas. All of the questions will be checked to see if they've been answered by existing research and we'll share any existing research at the end of the project. The second stage of the project will take place next year and you'll be invited to provide feedback to help us determine which questions should be included in the final top 10 research priorities for CDH in Australia. Throughout the project, we'll also be asking healthcare providers involved in the care of patients diagnosed with CDH to participate and share their experience too. If you have been affected by congenital diaphragmatic hernia, we would love to hear from you. The Gaps in the CDH Journey project is your chance to have a direct and meaningful role in optimising the outcomes for babies diagnosed with CDH. We thank you for joining us in this project. Hi everyone, my name is Emiko and I'm a CDH Australia board member and mum to CDHR Ari. When Ari was first diagnosed with CDH, I had a million questions. Ari's healthcare team was wonderful at answering all the medical questions, but I always seem to have even more. The CDH Australia online peer support group has been a wonderful way for me to connect with other families and also to learn more about Ari's condition by asking questions of the group and seeing what other parents have questions about too. Now that Ari is two years old, I have more questions, mainly about what the future of his health looks like. I'm delighted that CDH Australia has decided to partner with the Murdoch Children's Research Institute to develop a new project designed to understand the healthcare and research priorities of families just like mine. I'll be taking part in the online survey and submitting questions about CDH. If you can't think of a question or if you're unsure of how to phrase a question, I suggest you phrase it in a way as if you are asking the online peer support group. Have you ever asked or read a question in the group that couldn't be answered? Well, now is your chance to make that question count for the future. I really encourage everyone in this community to have a say to inspire further research and influence future care to improve the outcomes for babies diagnosed with CDH. We first heard about congenital diaphragmatic hernia when we were pregnant with our daughter, Sophia. We were living in Cobar in regional New South Wales. Our doctor sent us to Nepean Hospital in Western Sydney, which is about an eight hour drive away. It was a lot to deal with at the time, but the support from other CDH families in the online peer support group anchored us through weeks of uncertainty. Sophia was born at Westmead Hospital, January 2011. Once she was stable, she was taken to the NICU at the Westmead Children's Hospital. The day after she was born, she had surgery to repair her left-sided CDH. A few days after surgery, they aimed to remove her breathing tube, take her off morphine. Sophia was on a mill of milk via a tube. Things looked positive until we had a setback about a week later. Sophia went off food, had high temperatures, and needed to return to morphine. A few days later, she settled and was on the mend again. 
Cedar H is a roller coaster for families in neonatal intensive care units. The care and compassion shown by nurses on the NICU ward was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. I am convinced that these nurses are akin to angels, a far better class of human. At the time, because we lived in a remote area, we were staying at a parent's hostel in the hospital. They helped us navigate medical care, emotional turmoil, logistics of having family and friends want to meet Sophia in such a fragile environment. They even helped us plan our return to our hometown, which had extremely limited medical facilities. This year, after my 11th birthday, I set a goal to run 10K at the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. I also wanted to raise $500 for CDH. She trained diligently for months and in the lead up took part in three shorter running events where she came first and second in her age division. I went to the surgical lung clinic for lung function tests and we were happy when I was given the all clear to run the 10K. She completed the 10 kilometer run in 68 minutes in September this year, smashed her fundraising target when she raised $1,410 for CDH Australia to help support the CDH community. During the first few years, Sophia was closely monitored by the Children's Hospital at Westmead and she still attends regular checkups at the surgical lung clinic. I love sports and being active and a big part of those visits have been planning and monitoring my physical activity. As a toddler, Sophia started dancing and swimming lessons and began Auskick. Dance was her passion and she competed across the state winning competitions across several dance styles. She moved from Auskick to Junior AFL and we were so proud when she received the coaches award during her first year. At school, she excelled in running events at her athletics carnival, and this is where her love for running developed. Sophia makes us proud every day, and we are delighted that she's pursuing her love of sport by joining Little Athletics and playing soccer. Next year, she'll join a performing arts high school as a guitarist where she can develop her love of music. We are super proud of Sophia, and we can't wait to see what she sets her mind to next. Throughout our CDH journey, we have been supported by an amazing medical team, but there have been times when we had questions that simply could not be answered. Because we were based in a regional area of Australia, when we were diagnosed, we know it can be hard to access information and services. We'll be having our say in the new study funded by CDH Australia to help researchers understand what is important to us. If your family has been affected by CDH, please join us and take part. Thank you for joining our virtual awareness event today. We'd love to see how you're spending the day, so please share your photos by using hashtag CDHSFS. A big thank you to all of our wonderful volunteers, ambassadors and board members this year for your donation of time, skills and passion. We simply wouldn't exist without your dedication to our community. A special mention to the lovely people who have filmed their own CDH story to share with us today. We're very grateful that you've shared your journey and helped to raise CDH awareness. Thank you also to everyone who has donated, encouraged donations and fundraised. Donations help us to support the CDH community and fund projects just like our new research study, Gaps in the CDH Journey. We'll be launching the online survey directly after our video event today, and we encourage everyone in the CDH community to take part and have your say. Please continue to encourage donations throughout the month of November. We really do need your help this year to reach our fundraising target. Every single donation is important and makes a huge difference to our small charity. And although we are a charity, we really do feel more like a community who come together to make sure no family faces CDH alone.
Hi CDH family, my name is Carmel and I am mum to CDH Angel Aravella. At my first scan at the end of 2014, I was expecting to bring home a few ultrasound photos to share with the family. Instead, I learnt a new phrase, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. I was devastated. I had a healthy son at home and didn't understand if I had done something wrong. The doctor explained that CDH had no known cause and reassured me that nothing I had done had caused my baby's condition. I found the CDH Australia peer support group online and introduced myself immediately. Being able to connect with other families who have been through the same thing was an absolute godsend. I honestly don't know how I would have coped without them. Our pregnancy had a lot of complications, but Arabella kept growing and was very active. She moved so much that sometimes her scans were hard to read. Our medical team at the Martyr in Brisbane seemed cautiously optimistic with Arabella's progress. I remember one doctor saying that for a baby with CDH, our little girl was definitely doing everything right. We treated the pregnancy as normally as we could. We had beautiful family photos taken and we shopped for baby clothes. We had a 4D scan done purely for us and it was one of the best things we did. Watching our little girl was breathtaking. We decided to splurge and got a bear with a recording of Arabella's heartbeat placed inside. All of these memories have been precious to us. On the 27th of April 2015, Arabella joined our family. She had to be taken straight to NICU, which was heart-wrenching for me because all I wanted to do was hold her. When I eventually got to see her for the first time in NICU, it was confronting, beautiful and amazing, all rolled into one. She was so perfect. The days that followed were a roller coaster. Arabella's heart rate would skyrocket and her blood pressure would drop. We learned to deal with it, but it never got any easier. Arabella's surgery was scheduled a few days after she was born. Before she went into theatre, we said our goodbyes. We waited anxiously for the phone call, and when they told me she made it through, I burst into tears. After surgery, Arabella had extreme ups and downs. Some days felt like a positive turning point full of optimism, and the next day she would need maximum support, and the fear was terrifying. The emotional toll was severe. A beautiful baby girl fought hard and the amazing medical team fought even harder to keep Arabella comfortable and stable, but eventually there was nothing more they could do. At 19 days old, our family and friends came together. We held our little girl and we said goodbye. Our lives will never be the same again. Our angel entered our hearts and will be with us forever. Our journey inspired me to volunteer in the CDH community to help other families navigate their own path. I also post the birthday and angelversary messages on Facebook to recognise special dates in the lives of our community. Over the years, we've hosted events and fundraise for CDH Australia, and we are delighted to hear about the new project they are funding to improve outcomes for babies born with CDH. We will be submitting our questions that we'd like to be answered by future research, because we want to help make sure that other families don't have to go through the heartbreak that we did. We encourage everyone in the CDH community to take part. Please join us now for our traditional bubble blowing ceremony to recognise all babies born with CDH, both in our arms and in our hearts. We remember their fighting spirit, preciousness and gift of love. Today, we reflect on the struggles and triumphs of the families in our community and we celebrate the loving friendships that have been made through our peer support group. We now pay special respect to the families of our darling CDH angels with a reading of remembrance to finish our event. Thank you for joining us today. If tears could build a stairway and memories were a lane, we'd walk right up to heaven and bring you home again. Our hearts still ache in sadness and secret tears still flow. What it meant to lose you, no one will ever know. Since you'll never be forgotten, we pledge to you today, a sacred place within our hearts is where you'll always stay.